So right now I'm reviewing the VidPro XM88 shotgun microphone. Uh, this is the longer version. They have two versions. They have the XM55, which is shorter and therefore has a little bit wider of an audio pickup or a polar pattern. And this one is the XM88, which is longer, has a little bit narrower polar pattern. Uh, gives you a little bit better off-axis rejection. It comes in a rather nice little hard case. I mean, it's not like super duper nice, but the fact that it comes with it is pretty nice. It's a padded case. And as you can see, it's got the pre-cut foam for everything. This actually, it was not included with it. I added these on after the fact and got rid of, they had a 25 foot XLR cable, which I didn't need. And then they've got, of course, the little six inch uh, XLR and then uh, same size uh, XLR to 3.5 millimeter. So those are nice. They work pretty decent, it seems. And then here's the actual microphone itself. Comes with a rubber shock mount, which is a pretty nice little inclusion right there. And as you can see, it's got the uh, three modes off, on, and then a high pass filter. That high pass filter will help it cut out some of the wind noise. It also includes a cold shoe mount if you want to mount it like that, or just a standard quarter inch mount here that plugs into your 5 8 thread on the bottom. So then it plugs in like that and works pretty good. And can also, it's got a quarter attachment on the bottom so you can attach it to just about any light stand or pretty much anything. It also includes a dead cat and a pop filter, which are pretty nice inclusions, as well as including more of the rubber bands for that shock mount. And then the last thing it comes with is this right here, little mic stand mount. All in all, I like the uh, presentation and the way it's all stored in here. It keeps it nice and stable and sturdy. Uh, my major issue with it, I kind of wish that the uh, dead cat was able to mount over the pop filter so that way you could double up on them and hopefully get better results. If you're out in really windy condition, even with the pop filter or the dead cat and the high pass filter on, it's still going to be pretty rough. Oh, and then the other thing I forgot to show, it comes with a 3.5 millimeter jack as well as a battery which is inside the unit right now. Uh, the one thing I will say about this unit is it comes through, the signal comes through really weak. That's why I have this right here, the uh, smart rig. It's a preamp, so that way I can crank up the gains before it goes into my camera. And then I'll go ahead and switch to some B-roll and do play an audio test for you to see how it actually works out. Okay, so this is a comparison of two microphone systems. I've got the Ceramonic UW Mic 9 wireless lavalier system, and I'm comparing it to the VidPro XM88 shotgun microphone. The wireless lavalier is on my shirt collar, so it is maybe six inches from my mouth, and the shotgun microphone is about twice that distance. Uh, shotgun microphone has a dead cat on as I'm outside and it's kind of windy so that should give you a good comparison of the two in windy conditions. Uh, right now it's pretty noisy out here there's a lot of crickets and frogs I'm not sure how much of that you'll pick up on either of these but right now you are listening to the Saramonic so this is what the Saramonic would sound like outdoors in relatively noisy and slightly windy conditions. And now I'll go ahead and switch over to the XM88. This is what it sounds like in relatively noisy conditions, uh, slightly windy outdoors. And this is with the dead cat on. This is an audio sample of the XM88 shotgun microphone.
This is recorded on the XM88 shotgun microphone. Right now I have the pop filter off, the dead cat off, and the high pass filter is turned off. So this is on your base mode with no physical filters on. The microphone is sitting about one foot from my mouth, give or take. And there's a decent amount of background noise I'm sure you can hear right now. This is an audio sample with the high pass filter turned on. There's still no pop filter or dead cat filter. So this is what it would sound like with the high pass filter on. I believe it's a uh, 100 kilohertz high pass filter. Alright, so now I'm doing a test of the off axis noise rejection. If you can hear right now, there's a fan running in the background, which is basically right behind the uh, microphone. So, uh, it's not probably a fully fair test, considering the fact that I'm in this small office space out here, so it's echoing back off the walls and everything. But, yeah, uh, this should give you a pretty good idea of noise rejection. I'll also go ahead and move myself around off-axis to show you how my voice drops off as I hit the sides. And then I'll go ahead and do it on the other side to show you how it drops off. And so that's what your off-axis rejection looks like. A couple other things I wanted to go over with you guys that I forgot to do on my tabletop was uh, when I pointed to this handle twice, this extension handle, and called it a quarter inch twice, uh, the second time I meant to point out that it was a 3 8 inch adapter. You can unscrew the little quarter inch adapter and it'll work on your 3 8 so that way you can use it on most of your standard tripods. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the 48 volt phantom power. I don't think I touched on that at all. This unit can accept phantom power as well as using a AA battery that screws into the back there. And uh, the one thing that I found nice about this unit as opposed to other units I've seen is that I've heard a lot of other units that have an internal battery cannot use the phantom power if the battery is dead, which completely defeats the purpose of having that versatility. So I think that's pretty nice that this one does still let you use it on phantom power with no battery inserted at all. As a whole, my uh, summary of this uh, microphone would be that it's a pretty good entry-level microphone. If you're looking to go ultra cheap, you can get the shorter XM55. It doesn't seem like it has like super great off-axis noise rejection. I mean, it's pretty good though. I mean, it's not terrible. The length on this one gets a little bit cumbersome because you're staring down about a 12 inch barrel as opposed to say I think it's an 8 inch barrel on the other one. It is a little bit less portable although having the case that fits it makes it pretty nice. Um, and uh, just as a side note I know it's an unfair comparison doing the shotgun microphone against a lavalier mic but that was the only other high quality mic I had to test it against. So uh, anyway I hope you guys enjoy the video. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to DSLR Video Shooter for his video on how to modify the Ceremonic Smart Rig to work with DSLR cameras. Because as it stands, it's actually a smartphone device. It uses a TRRS connection, 3.5 millimeter jack, and your camera uses a TRS connection. So he has a great modification video, which I'll go ahead and link to in the description so you can check it out yourself. But basically, uh, with a little bit of soldering, you can turn this into a TRS connection, so that way it'll work with your SLR.